and welcome. Today I am delighted to have Daniel Dowling. Daniel is an entrepreneur. He is a millennial motivator. Uh, you can see his work in popular publications including Entrepreneur Magazine, Mind Body Green, and The Goodman Project. The last time I had Daniel on, we talked about how people can reach the finish line and freelance writing. A lot of people want to uh, have a, P, a paid freelance writing career, but oftentimes they struggle uh, because they don't they don't actually know the strategies. Uh, they don't know the tactics and tips that they can need to be successful and having such a, a lucrative and remote career, which will allow them to be able to do it anywhere in the world. So happy to have Daniel. Daniel, welcome. Happy to be here, Callan. Good to see you, man. Great. The last time we talked, we talked about a lot of different publications, okay? Uh, for, for, for those of you uh, who haven't listened to the last episode, I definitely uh, recommend uh, people uh, check that out. That's in, it's in the 30 series. I'm not sure exactly which episode, but it's definitely in the 30 series. Uh, check that out. But we talked about writing for different publications like, you know, Huffington Post and, you know, uh, Entrepreneur and Mind, Body, Green and Life Hack and Goodman Project. And uh, I mean, a, a lot of publications I write for, uh, you also write for. We talk about using it as ways to uh, get uh, exposure and exposing people uh, to your brand and, and, and to, to any other people's brand. Uh, let's kind of revisit that. Let's kind let's kind of go back a little bit and let's talk about some of the success that you have had and some of the success that you're having now in regards to writing for uh, some of these publications. Okay, so a little before and after snapshot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. Okay. Back when we talked, which was what six months ago, seven yeah, months ago, could be longer. Yeah. Uh, I was, I was writing for CheatSheet.com, uh, and I had leveraged my exposure on MindBodyGreen.com and Goodman Project and some some of the five thousand uh, top top ranked websites in the world. And it was good, you know. Um, I was making good money. I was getting to be able to save up, and I wasn't really improving all that much. So I was at I was at a level, and I was looking at these other guys like Callan Diggs, for instance, or Kamanzi Constable, getting on all these cool sites like uh, Entrepreneur.com and Inc. Magazine and uh, Huffington Post. And I was just thinking, how do I get there? And so after that. After our interview, I was just thinking it's really time to kick it up. It's time, it's time to make it happen. It's time to reach the finish line. As That's you would it. say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I had to look into to ways to improve my writing and and uh, to sell my writing. So that's that's how I took it up to the next level. And so now. I'm writing for sites like Entrepreneur Magazine. I've gotten thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of business just from having written for them for a couple months. And I've even gotten accepted as an editor for Entrepreneur.com. Uh, whenever they have a spot open for it, I'm the next in line to edit at Entrepreneur.com, uh, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I can tell you the story of that, but um, yeah. So, and uh, let's talk about that. I, let's talk about that. Let's talk about. Let's first start off with. Um, I really, you say you were struggling. Uh, you know, you wasn't. I mean, obviously, you know, you were having success. You was getting a lot of these publications. Uh, you was getting traffic to your website, but it really wasn't converting into uh, you know making any money. And uh, oftentimes, a lot of people have that problem. They'll get traffic to the website, but for some reason, it doesn't convert into a sale. And they're like, "Oh, what's going on? You know, I'm, I, you know, I, I, th I think I'm doing these things right." And, and so some people just can't get it. And that's, and that's what you struggle with. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, you stumbled upon uh, a great publication, a publication that I write for and I, I enjoy, uh, for Entrepreneur Magazine. And perhaps what? What did you think? Did you think that was specifically the publication that really turned things around for you as far as starting to make money? Or perhaps was it something else you did? Let's talk about that. Good question. Such a good question. Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't 
where I could take my career to the next level. It wasn't like that at all. I wrote a bad to the bone article and I knew it could help a lot of young entrepreneurs because it was how, it was my success story after, uh, after I got canned from the writing job that I had at the time of our last interview. And I wrote this article. I write an article every day. Let's stop right there. You got canned. Who canned you? If, if you want to talk, do you want to talk about it or no? Okay, yeah, Chi Chi. I was okay. writing for the so why I got canned. Why? Why did, it can? why, why did they put you in a can? What happened? <laughs> well, I, I'm a truth seeker. I want to write about the fundamentals of why men and women are having trouble in relationships and a lot of people don't want to go there because it involves a lot of hard work and a lot of discipline. So we had some issues. There was there were a lot of uh, political correct angles that I didn't want to attack and I was also turning out uh, 3,200 words a day at points making 200 bucks a day. So my writing quality, I sacrificed the quality for quantity and with some differences and just time, things things accumulate. The badness accumulates into a snowball, and uh, it ended up with me getting canned. So let's talk about that. They, they were letting you write. I mean, I mean, this. Uh, it's, I mean, it's unfortunate that it happened, but at the same time, it kind of turned into a gift for you because you're doing you're doing uh, better things now. But. Oh, yeah. uh, but let's talk about that. Uh, so, I mean, uh, you know, for people who are interested, maybe writing for maybe a publication like that, uh, you know, so so they, they they allow they give writers that much work. They will pay them for that much work, like thirty two hundred words uh, a day or something like that. Or oh yeah, yeah. If you have good content, if you have interesting pitches, and if you have a good relationship with the editor, you can pitch as many articles as you want. But it's not two hundred dollars for thirty two hundred words, like 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 like. Yeah. Like that. No, no, no. Uh, it's they paid. Let's see, fifty bucks an article. Oh, okay. And and that was a starting out rate, you know. Yeah. Um, and just for everyone that knows, uh, in a freelance writing world, that's the minimum wage for getting paid an article. Uh, yeah. Fifty bucks. Uh, typically, uh, uh, you know, if someone's gonna pay you lower than that, you might as well just write for free. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and write what you want to write and then leverage that on major publications for sure for sure great so um i'm not gonna say i'm glad you got canned but i'm quite sure you're glad you got canned you know yeah. uh but uh yeah. <laughs> so um let's continue let's let, let's continue uh in that story and talk about okay so uh obviously you got canned and then what was next what was next well the end result was me writing about how I changed, what I changed specifically, and what markets I went after to increase my pay by a thousand percent. And that was the article that I wrote. And after I wrote it, I thought, oh my God, this needs to be published on Entrepreneur because it can help so many people. It was just one of those perfect fits. I didn't think about it before. It wasn't planned. The only plan was to share as much value, as much value with as many people as possible. That was the plan. Uh, but to get to, to there, from getting canned to writing that article about how getting canned was the best thing that ever happened to me, um, I I just I did a complete overhaul. I was burnt out, writing 3,200 words a day, not taking any time for me, not doing the things that I loved. So my creativity was going down, my inspiration to write was going down, which sucked because writing is the thing that I like to do most. Um, Barring a couple of other activities, beach volleyball being one. Yeah. Uh, by the way, by the way, you all, Daniel Dowling is the beach volleyball champion in New Mexico. I'm not sure if that's accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm making it accurate. I'm getting okay. better. Every week. So cool, it's actually cool. on my daily affirmations. I have a, I have a piece of paper that says that, and I read it every morning in the mirror. Cool. <laughs> that's cool. No, no, I, I, I know you love it. I know you have a passion for it. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But continue, please. No, thank you. Thank you. I'll share that. <laughs> yeah. With people who don't know better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, but anyway, I was totally burnt out. So I was writing articles that were not nearly at my potential just to get by, and there wasn't much room for improvement. You know, I could have made 75 bucks an article. Two months later, or a hundred bucks an article 
a year later, but that's not that much money. Um, so I consider getting canned as one of the biggest blessings of my life because it forced me to reevaluate what the heck I was doing, why I wasn't getting results, the results that I wanted, and how to move forward and what steps to take to get to where I wanted to be. And in six months, you know, between three and six months, uh, I got to where I wanted to be. And now I'm getting to where I want to go from here. So it's steps that are built off of daily routines that anyone can implement, daily success rituals and affirmations, journaling, stuff like that, and really planning out your day. So, right. uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, Dan, I know you're. I know you're uh, a, a spiritual person. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, perhaps we you attribute. You know, kind of. You know, you know, th maybe some of the things that you, some of the things that you have been doing on a daily basis, uh, as the result of you know getting into entrepreneur, as the result of getting now um, you know, a recent contract from uh, from Fitbit. Uh, but uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps I, I think that is the case for you. Uh, let's let's take an opportunity uh, to kind of talk about that. Maybe because because I mean, I, but before we start the episode, uh, you, you did say that, that there were some success, uh, some daily routines that really was really instrumental in your success. Uh, so let's talk about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, when I was grinding thirty two hundred words a day, working twelve hours, you know, just going over these things that I didn't really care all that much about. Some of the topics were interesting, but nothing that really inspired me. Um, I didn't have time to read. Well, I didn't make time to read. And, uh, you know, if you want to get better at something, you learn from the mistakes of others. And if there's a great author that's been published on the topic of your choice, of your profession, he has lifetimes of experience from the people that he's learned from to, and to, to include his own life that you can learn from so that you can accelerate your growth curve exponentially if you really focus on what they're saying and if you take notes and apply their, the knowledge directly into, uh, into your work, into refining your craft. And that's what I did. I scheduled daily time for reading and I, I would commit to it just as seriously, seriously as if I were being paid a thousand dollars an hour. I wouldn't skip it for anything. And um, yeah, I mean, and it wasn't just reading. I would take notes. Sometimes I would write down every page in a chapter, just because all of that information was so useful for me, and I wanted to remember it. I wanted it to uh, to be retained in my brain. And and. Learning wasn't just enough, and I knew that, so I had to apply it. So after I got done reading, as soon as I could, I would sit down at the keyboard and then apply those techniques that I learned, apply those little nuances and hints that I had gleaned through my reading session. And that's when my growth curve just The E.B. White and Peter Strunk, the elements of style, um, all, all of that wisdom, I was translating directly into work. So it's, it, it was being useful, and I was seeing my growth every single day and journaling about it right. and so, encouraging so, myself about it. So was this specifically writing books, or was it writing books and like personal development books? A little bit of both. Okay. Okay. I mean, what were some of the self-help books that, that, that helped you, that you find helpful? Um, you're sitting on a ledge, you want to kill yourself, and you don't really want to kill yourself. I'm just kidding. That's not the title of the book. <laughs> that, would, that would be an interesting book to read. <laughs> uh, let's see. I picked up Tony Robbins, okay. um, Unleash the Giants. That I picked up. In a way, it, it mostly writing books, yeah. but writing okay. books are self-help books in a way. Because because, because it's, about, 
It's about habits, right? About instilling habits. Yeah. Yeah. It's about habits. Yeah, it's exactly correct. Yeah. Um, and also, the better you learn to write, the better you learn to think. Mm -hmm. And as most of us know, thoughts are what build your reality. So the better you learn to think through writing, through refining your writing, through refining your habits, um, the better you become at life in general. So. Great, great. All right. So uh, obviously, well, we talked about talk about the books and the importance that was, and uh, definitely uh, we will make a note uh, of the books that you mentioned, uh, so we can include uh, some links uh, in this uh, show page episode for people uh, who want to check out those books. Uh, so, what's the next step? Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you, you invest in your, you, you invested a lot in these daily routines, reading these books, making notes. Uh, you know, uh, making a lot of notes. You know, studying this uh, daily. Uh, you know, to be able to commit to that. Okay. Yeah, you got can from cheat sheet. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you know that was no good feel. I mean, uh, it, there's never a good feeling to get can from anything. You know, but yeah. uh, but but you got can from there. Uh, so you went say, okay, well, hey, you know what? I gotta, I, you know, I, I gotta get grounded. I gotta dig into these books. Uh, you know, you know this 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 is really gonna. You know, I, I believe it's really gonna make a difference. You've done that, and then you said there's like a three to six month period. Let's let uh, let's come towards the end of that. Let's talk about what was happening. Okay. Um, well, to be able to commit to the writing, to the writing or to the reading routines, and then the writing daily writing daily reading, I had to build the confidence in myself. And I had to build discipline in myself, um, and I did that through daily affirmations and journaling. So I, before I began my writing career, I failed at everything. Man, I failed. Uh, I joined the army, flopped out of that. I went into restaurant management, uh, flopped out of that, and you know I, I did a couple years of college, and and then when I found writing. I, I uh, decided that if I didn't succeed at writing, I would die trying. Um, That's an important point. Uh, let's kind of let's kind of get into that a little bit. Uh, a, a lot of people uh, kind of have the same experiences that you have, but they kind of come to this thing that oh, I'm a failure. It's like everything I, everything I, tr everything I try to do. It, it, it turns to crap, you know. Nothing is nothing is working, you know. I, I'm doing this, and, you, know, you know. Like you say, you try you try this thing, it didn't work. You try that thing, it didn't work. You try you try going to college, that didn't work, you know. And a lot of people, you know, they feel deflated, you know. They lose that motivation, and they kind of give up, and they kind of say, well, I I guess you know, I guess I guess it's not for me, you know. Maybe maybe I should just get a regular job and live a regular life, you know. And in order to in order to have extraordinary results. It starts by being an extraordinary person, and uh, that's definitely something that uh, it's definitely something that you have learned. So please continue. Okay. Um, yeah. So I was at the bottom. You know, I was living with my parents, living on my mom's couch, sharing a bathroom with my teenage sisters who were still in high school, and fighting over the last scrap of bread. No, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I no it, it was pretty bad for me. You know, I was. Um, uh, I was I was homeless, uh, you know. My my parents were in and out of my life, uh, so I mean I mean it's just, it's just it's just contrast, you know. Like for example, like a person may come from where you from a situation like you came from, Daniel, and a person may come from a situation like I have came from. But the fact of the matter is, you have to be an extraordinary person to get extraordinary results, you know. And of course, you know, for for where a person may came. It may be harder. Like, you know, I first see my life, oh, you know, I was, you know, homeless. I was on my own. I was, you know, 15 years old, still going to high school, working full time, uh, doing, you know, you know, you know, I mean, yeah, obviously it was probably, it, it taught me how to grow up fast. You know, I grew yep. up very fast, you know. Uh, but to it was say, back then, but you look at it now and you see it as a blessing because of how you responded to it. For sure. You know, you got can you know you got you got can from cheese. She's like ah, you know, what am I going to do? But now, you know, you uh, you're an entrepreneur. You, know, you got a you got you got a nice. Uh, actually, you got two two contracts that I definitely want to talk about. Two great contracts, and yeah. then uh, and then you're looking at an editorial position uh, there soon. So yeah, really, that's what it comes down to. You know, I mean, obviously, you faced the adversity, but you still had a bigger vision, 
and that bigger vision is what brought you uh, to where you're at now so again let's let's kind of go to the end of that okay. period when, uh, from when you got canned all the way into uh, shortly before you start writing from entrepreneur let's start kind of talking about what that ex what that process and that experience was like okay um, well I I had to motivate myself you know I had certain amount saved up I moved into a new place in town and I had no money that was coming from any concrete source so I absolutely had to do it or otherwise I'd be homeless uh, you know it's that's the ultimate motivation yeah. and I had to fix I had to fix those limiting beliefs about myself that were that were keeping me from being an extraordinary person so I started daily affirmations uh, every every morning I woke up which has hopefully been every morning since I've lived since then um, but <laughs> um, every morning before I get out of bed I'm thinking of 21 things I'm grateful for 21 people I'm grateful for um, I'm affirming the kind of person the kind of man that I am the kind of man that I want to be I'm congratulating myself on my successes and I'm doing all of this before I even get out of bed just so that I can start with the right foot so that I can have momentum to keep building it up and that's just that constant sense of encouragement from myself building it up and actually building up my belief and my faith in myself that's what enabled me to stick to these success routines um, you know learning so much about reading uh, about writing and about uh, marketing and about being a professional so, so from there I had the confidence built up in myself um, and I'm really improving as a writer so now I gotta sell myself or I'm homeless so I did uh, oh and one other important step I looked to other people who had gone and done it before me so Kamanzi Constable he had a class called freedom through online business I paid 97 bucks I had maybe 98 in my bank account and so I thought I need to use this and I need to make it work it was three online classes over three weeks hour piece you know question and answer session with Kamanzi who's He's on all the major publications, and he makes ungodly amounts of money on all these different contracts and consulting businesses. Travels the world, uh, you know, and he's just gener generally an awesome guy. Sure. Um, so I looked up to him. I had gotten value from him before, just from his free value. I purchased that Freedom Through Online Business course, and one uh, one pithy bit of information changed my career and. He was talking about how to implement, you know, how to get, how to sell yourself, and he said, find the solutions and sell the solutions. So a lot of businesses don't know that they're having problems, but if you have a specific niche, an area of interest, a specialty that you're really good at, and you can see the hole in the business, then you can leverage that. You can you can approach them and say, hey, well, from my from my end is, hey, I'm Daniel Dowling, I specialize in uh, writing, editing, health, fitness, blogs, content, all that. Uh, here's what I can do for you. Here's, here's, what I, here's what is missing and here's how I can fill it. So I stacked from that, from that uh, Freedom Through Online Business course, the Comanzi Constables, I, get, I got that directive to look for the solutions and to sell the solutions. And so I started pitching myself every day. And so I had an hour to read, I had an hour for affirmations and journaling, then I had two hours to pitch. And I did it every single day. I looked up the best, looked up the best uh, corporate wellness companies because that's my greatest interest and my greatest strength and I've done a lot of health research. Um, and just local businesses in my area and I would cold call and cold emails and you know it took a while to get the results but I got results people called back I got meetings not all the meetings worked out but the meetings that did I started writing for 500 bucks an article and uh, and, you know, and how many words was this art was these articles 500 uh, 500 to 700 words that's good yeah it's very good yeah. Please continue. Yep. Okay. Um, well, that's all I had. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, so I that was one of my daily directives. Pitch your little Irish butt off, you know? Yeah. And I, I did. And... Yeah, and to add and, and to add on to that too, uh, you know, uh, in fact, we had Kamazi Constable on the show uh, twice already, uh, episode four, and I believe uh, episode is in the sixty series. I think it's sixty seven or sixty eight, but yeah, a- absolutely, uh, 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 great, uh, great guy. Uh, he's definitely uh, one of the definitely one of the leaders uh, as far as when it comes to uh, paid uh, freelance writing. Uh, definitely recommend y'all check those episodes out. So, all right. So, yeah, get at, get at Kamanzi Constable if you if you want to get at success, you'll get at Kamanzi Constable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He was a truck sure, delivery was... delivery driver, and then now he's ma- making ungodly sums of money doing what he loves, riding and helping people. He knows the steps, and you know it's. I'm thankful to have learned from him. For sure, and, and, and that's and, and that's always. That's always uh, good, good to hear. Uh, let's continue. Let's talk about uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of your your idea. Uh, you say, okay, hey, you know what? I'm ready. I think I got you. Yeah, I'm ready. You know, I got this. I could I, I could take on to this. You know, I'm going to entrepreneur. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, uh, I'm sure that's how you was feeling before you know, before you you reached out to him. Let's talk about that process. Okay, uh, getting on entrepreneur. Uh huh. All right. Hey, well, hey, you could talk about you could talk about. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'll talk about my. I'll talk about how I got in, and then we can talk about how you got in. Okay. okay so I could talk about 17th century quilting, and I could make it interesting. <laughs> 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 so how I got in uh, was. Uh, uh, I used to work with uh, a guy named uh, Seth Showhouse. Uh, he reached out to me. Uh, oh. He was telling me about how Entrepreneur had this new initiative with uh, uh, it was it was some type of venture capital company, and Entrepreneur wanted to kind of create some type of uh, like a like almost like a it was like kind of like a, a Linda dot com kind of platform but free. And, uh, they, and also, they wanted to definitely they want to kind of direct all that to their YouTube because they wanted to increase their YouTube channel. So they was releasing us. Uh, they told me about it, and well, he told me about it. You know, I kind of you know I heard about it. But I said okay, you know. Uh, and then he told me about it again, and uh, you know I look I, I looked at it thoroughly, and I said you know what this is a great opportunity, you know. So like it, it, it was like a co partnership. It, it was called Entrepreneur Network back back in the day. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, you know I was one I was one of the first people. Who started producing videos for Entrepreneur Magazine's uh, YouTube channel, mm-hmm. and uh, from there, uh, it was just simple as uh, oh, uh, he probably is going to kill me. I forgot. I forgot the, the managing editor's name of Entrepreneur. I forgot. So I, I, I feel horrible. But uh, the like the the editor in chief of Entrepreneur. What's that? Peter Page. No, that's the contributor. No, not the contributions. No, oh, okay, no, he's the he's the editor in chief, you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I guess I kind of feel if if you're watching this video, please forgive me, you know. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, he re- uh, he reached out to me. Uh, he liked my videos, and uh, he basically invited me uh to contribute to Entrepreneur. And uh, I mean, that's that's the best feeling to have when someone comes to you uh to ask you to write for them. That, that's always the best feeling to have. Yeah. I didn't get that feeling. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I fought my way in, I scraped, I kicked, I clawed, and I got it. Yeah. No, but hey, uh, kudos to you as well, my friend. Uh, but yeah, so um, he invited me, and I started writing from there, and then that's how you know me and Peter we start working together. Uh, me and Peter uh, Page. So uh, you know that's you know that's my editor. I'm sure that's your editor too, right now. And, uh, and so let's talk about that. That, that's how I got into entrepreneur. Let's talk about how you got in. Okay. Well, it was that article. Um, but I have to zoom back a little bit. So three, about three months after uh, I got canned, and I, you know, I'm told, I'm revolutionizing the way I make decisions and live my life from the ground up. You know, from my thoughts to my actions to my habits. Um, so I'm reshaping my destiny, and. Did that sound dramatic? Yeah. No, that sounds awesome, man. <laughs> that sounds awesome. So dramatic. Um, 
but really, I mean, you change your thoughts, and just like Mahatma Gandhi's quote, you change your destiny at the end of it. It starts a positive feedback loop. Um, but I had learned so much on that journey, and I had learned so much about being a man, providing for myself, about getting off the couch and doing something with your life. And that inspired me to write articles for millennials, to make a difference to all of those people who were in the same situation as me, who were in the same situation as me, and probably even worse, a lot worse for a lot of them. Uh, I'm blessed to have a loving and caring family. So that's, it's, uh, yeah, can't ever uh, forget your blessings. But Indeed. I had been stacking up these articles because I was inspired. Um, once you start on the path of self-improvement, if you're on it, it's going to be a continual up and up, you know, so, get bucked off. So you had, you, had a bunch, you had a bunch of articles just waiting in the wings. Yep. I see. Cool. Yep. And, and then one day after one particular one, the story that I just told you about uh, in the audience about how, from how I got canned to making a thousand percent more, after I wrote that article, uh, I saw it and I thought, holy crap, this is going on entrepreneur. I know it and I know it's going to help a lot of people. And I, I hadn't really paid a whole lot of attention to pitches before that article, but because I wanted it to succeed so well and because I wanted to reach that audience, I really put my heart and soul into the pitch. And it ended up being about 400 words. It started off something like, uh, hey, Peter, my name's Dan. Uh, I got canned from the cheat sheet six months ago. Best thing that ever happened to me. And then I go directly into where I'm at now, how I got there, what I'm doing, where I'm going, the ass that I'm kicking, uh, throwing in personal bits. Like I get to feed myself now, which is a plus. Uh, and talking about dollar per word contracts and all that, getting him excited because I'm excited. Uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't get excited about the article, and that's what I've learned about pitching. You really got it. The story can't just carry itself. You know, you have to get the the editor interested in reading the story with a story of your story. And if you can't get excited about it, then your editor won't get excited about it, and you won't get published. So. But I did, I was excited, and I knew I had to make it work, so I made it concise, I made it funny, I put out bits of myself into it, bits of humor, and uh, gave them a nutshell synopsis, I actually included that. Here's the nutshell, after that, 100 words of how I improved, and how I, um, and where I'm going now. Then I said, I put a couple article links, and said, all right, enough about the pitch, here's the full article. Two weeks later, I'm vacationing in uh, Las Vegas, and I get the email at my brother's house. And it's at night, we've been traveling all day, I'm exhausted, I see the email, hey Dan, you're not gonna get paid for this, but we like it, you're on. And I just, ah, you know, I jumped yeah. and I was and then, uh, I had been visualizing it, just imagining, oh my gosh, it's going to be so great. And it was better than I could have even imagined, you know, just that elation of conquering that one goal and to know that I'm going to be able to share value there from here on out and to get more opportunities from there. So, yeah, that's how it happened. That's how I got, that's how I got on Entrepreneur. Awesome. <clears throat> so, when you're first at, um, well, I, I, I guess I got, I guess I will. Well, no, let's let, let's keep the spotlight on you. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people already know about me, so let's let, let's turn around. Let's just let, let's just keep it on you. Like I said, many people are know about me already. I, uh, you know, you know, because you know all these episodes and more people are more people know about myself than I do than I do about my own self. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, let's talk about when you got that first article published on Entrepreneur. dot com. Let's talk about what happened 24 hours from that first article all the way into kind of that first month uh, of the of that first article being published on Entrepreneur. I, I want to hear from you because I, t because my, based on my experience, other people's experience, a lot of interesting things start happening. So I, oh, I, I want to yeah. hear from you first. Oh yeah. 
yeah. well, my three-year-long depression lifted instantly. I regained my fertility. I got pregnant. I found the perfect man. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all silliness aside, I the article got published, and it got 6,000 views, or not views, it got 6,000 likes, or not likes, it got 6,000 shares. Are you sitting down? You ready for it? 6,000 shares. <laughs> and that was more shares than I'd ever gotten on any other article for any other publication. Yeah. And that was within, you know, two days. Wow. And so it, def it definitely boosted the confidence account. Um, that's a term from Peter Boog, uh, not Boog, duh, Peter Boog. Um, uh, millionaire, millennial entrepreneur, uh, uh, founder of the Game Changers Academy. But uh, past that aside, um, and I, I didn't skip a beat. As soon as I got that article out, I started pushing it. Um, the the well from that first corporate wellness drop that I had, you know, was getting paid a buck a word to write for that had dried up. They went under, so I had to find new sources immediately. And I went back to the pitch. I shouldn't have stopped the pitch. That's a handy piece of advice. No matter what success, no matter how much money you're bringing in, you always need to take time to pitch. If you're not pitching, you're not going to be able to feed yourself, and you're not going to be able to share your value, and you're going to be missing out on amazing opportunities, life-changing opportunities. So it doesn't matter how successful you get with writing. Take 30 minutes a day, a couple hours a week, and refine your pitch and get your value out there so you can have more money and more opportunities to succeed and do what you want in life. Um, but anyway, I targeted the companies I wanted to work for. Um, Training Amigo is one of them. Uh, they're one of the best corporate wellness uh, corporate wellness companies in the world. You know, they, they go into businesses that are struggling with high insurance costs and sick employees and they just, they totally turn around with their uh, their online infrastructure with their value-based videos, things like that, and they they give back. So I knew these people were the right people to work with. Training I, Amigo. Training Amigo. Okay. Yeah, it's trainingamigo.com. It's okay. it's awesome stuff. Uh, Nathan Fig, the founder of that, good guy. Um, but anyway, and that was one of what forty people that I pitched, and Fitbit was also one of them. I thought, okay, the biggest corporate wellness company in the world. Why not? <laughs> and uh, so I got tr training Amigo within a month or two, and it took a couple series of of talking on the phone and just me t telling exactly where I could help, you know, editing, content creation, and just helping with the marketing and stuff like that. Uh, but I landed the account, and then it's I'll money in the right bank. There. So uh, you say you was you was kind of helping in for you was helping them first before you landed that account what, what, what was you like helping them for free or let's talk about that well it's kind of it's kind of like any online marketer you give a little bit of value and if they like it then it comes back so it's not like I went and and did you know five hours of work and like please like this please like this hire me and select me it was please, please, me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm worthy. Please. Pick. No, it was not that. Uh, it was it was strategic. Uh, I knew that if I could show him how much how how valuable I was to the company and exactly where I would help him, then it would be a no-brainer to hire me. No-brainer. So I did spend a couple hours looking at their blogs, seeing exactly what I would change, uh, and. Yeah, just really. So you basically you, you basically kind of give them kind of like a, almost like a, a free kind of like uh, site evaluation in a way. Yeah, yeah. Just like, like hey, this is this is what's wrong. We, I think we can improve in this area. We can add this. This can optimize. Like something like stuff like that, right? Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's a great way to offer value. Simple, a simple outline to optimize their written communications, which is their bread and butter. That's how you get customers. Um, and it's just like a pest, pest company or a contracting company. They come and they give you a free evaluation and it's valuable, 
uh, they don't get paid for it, but they know that they will get paid for it when the right clients come around because it's, it'd be foolish for people just to flat out reject their services. And so you have to have that confidence in your services to be able to do that. Um, but I did it and it worked and it worked with a couple other companies, a couple more companies, worked with the city of Albuquerque. Um, they're rebranding Albuquerque to entice and attract young entrepreneurs like you and me um, to to come in and to contribute to their business scene and to take part in the amazing opportunities with you know the biggest entrepreneurs in the city and to retain talent too. Uh, and I got that contract. It's a 15 month contract. Um, nice. It's, it actually starts the 29th of this month, and, but and that's a huge thing. For, and and, that's, yeah. and that, started, that started out with an email and then you kind of talked to them on the phone, kind of same process? Yep. I, that was a little bit different, just a little aside. Um, I like to read the newspaper now just to get a scope, get a feel for the local businesses. I saw one article that, uh, and this was several months ago, um, I saw one article by Steve McKee, who's the owner of the largest ad agency in New Mexico, McKee Wallwork, and was talking about the same thing, you know, bringing new talent in to revitalize Albuquerque and to make it to make it new and to bring people into this land of enchantment with new business opportunities. And I thought I could contribute to that. So I reached out to him directly through LinkedIn. And you know, I'm this little nobody writer at the time and he's huge, you know, he's book published and everything, but I was sincere. He liked the sincerity and he forwarded me to the creative director. She interviewed me and we had kept an ongoing relationship and I would send in my value if I got an article published on My Body Green that I thought she'd like, I'd send it to her. When I got published on Entrepreneur, I'd send it to her. And, uh, and then one day, I hadn't heard from her in a little while, a couple weeks, so I checked back in, or checked back in and uh, said, hey, how's it going, Katie? Here's my Entrepreneur article. And she said, oh, glad you got in touch. We have um, a project coming up for you. And that was a couple months ago. And the day after I turned 27, September 6th, um, I landed that contract, and it's 15 months, and it's high-profile stuff. I'll be, I'll be writing about all of these businesses, about the entrepreneurs that started these businesses, and the districts in the city that are supporting you know, this entrepreneurial life, and it's going to be all over New Mexico, and it's going to be all over the media, and when they, go to, when they go to the bottom of the article, they're going to say, oh, Daniel Dowling wrote this, so we need to get him for our business. And it's just, it's incredible. It's an incredible opportunity. There it is. There it is. Awesome, man. I mean, uh, you know, one thing that you have uh, that has been really key to your success is you have a system. And um, um, maybe Daniel is getting a glass of water. Ah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> needs a little energy to, to keep going. Definitely, uh, oh, uh, yeah. totally okay. <laughs> um, one thing that you, one thing that Daniel had, one thing that's kind of vital to the to Daniel has been vital to success is that he has a system, and where uh, obviously not only is he pitching, but he's following up. Not only is he following up, but he's also uh, maintaining the relationship by offering value in the form of whether he offers a. Uh, like a, maybe like a site evaluation, or maybe he's sharing articles that could be relevant to uh, to the to the prospect he's trying to target. It's these types of things that that's really instrumental to increase a person's chance of success. To be able to get these types of accounts that Daniels has been uh, getting, uh, you know, to work on, and you know, you know, from training Amigo from the the, uh, the state of New Mexico. Uh, I think you also got McDonald's, didn't you? Yep. Let's talk yeah, about I got that. Um, well, McDonald's is an evil corporation, and they entice freelancers with all these, oh, here, you're selected out of a pool of 400 ar Anyway, four months ago, I signed a contract, haven't had a dime of work. So let this be a lesson to any freelancer. Do not count your chickens till they hatch. Mm -hmm. 
You don't have chickens until they hatch, until there's money, fistfuls and gobs of money in your hand. And I actually made a mistake doing that. I went through some pretty lean times because I, I backed off the pitches for a while. I, oh, I got the McDonald's account. And I was selected one or maybe five people out of a pool of four or 500 uh, applicants, but it never started. They it just never came to fruition. So that happens, and especially when you get involved with the bigger bureaucracies and the bigger corporations. Did you actually sign a contract with them, or? I did. Oh, but you, I did. they just never gave you any work. Yeah, I checked in, like, we're gonna give you work, we're gonna give you work. And uh, if they call me tomorrow and say, hey, we've got work, then I'll come back on the show and retract it and say, McDonald's isn't people. Ha. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> No, but, but 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 they don't have your hands tied. You can still you can still uh, you know uh, I mean obviously they're not giving you any work, so your hands are not tied. I mean that's why you got these other accounts, right? No, but I tied my own hands and I got complacent and I thought, okay, I got this huge contract. I'm gonna be making the mud. And uh, I stopped. I laid off the pitching for a while, yeah. and then the weeks went by. One week went by, and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, it's still gonna start. It's still gonna start. And I don't have to pitch. I can just squat, fritter away my time. Um, not exactly, but you know, not hustle as hard as I needed to hustle. And and two weeks goes by, and my smile's getting a little droopy, uh, wondering wondering where that next meal is going to come from, you know. <laughs> and uh, that's very that's very common, uh, uh, Daniel. A lot of people uh, they just want to, you know, I, I, I <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, they, I gotta stay active. Yeah, they just want to get that one thing, and you know, people. Oh man, you know, oh, yeah, oh, if I could just uh, get, if I could just get the book deal, if I could just get a book deal, you know, everything would be so much better. And I could just lay back and kick back and all that, or 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 hey, hey you know, you know, if I could just write for the Huffington Post, or or hey, hey, hey or hey, if I could just get this account, like it's it's always that one thing. exactly, it's always that one thing for 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 a person, you know, and they think that everything is going to be. Uh, completely different and uh, unfortunately a lot of people as you have experienced yourself as I have experienced a lot of people are often uh, you know sh you know sh uh, surprised um, but sometimes people too they kind of fall in that trap you know they, they say okay okay well well okay it wasn't this but it, it's this it's this I have to get this you know and, and sometimes people think they, they, they get into a cycle of that over and over again and really, uh, success is uh, it's nothing but a journey. Uh, oftentimes, uh, people, you know, well, for me, I can, well, I'll speak from my experience, and where uh, when I got my book contract, uh, or, 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 or in general, when, or uh, let's say the book contract, when I, got the, when I got the book contract, I was happy. Uh, but it's like every success I've had after the book contract, I'm happy. But it's not like I'm not jumping up up and down because again it's it's about taking a realistic approach you know it's like yes it's, it's good it's good that we all reach a new milestone but there has to, but there's work that still needs to be done you know it's, mm -hmm. it's not no you reach a milestone you kick back you can relax you just let the you, you just let the, 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 the money rain down <laughs> <laughs> so at that point it's not even praying so it's doubly worthless exactly you know, you know? It's and complacency, you're just for give, sure. it, give it up for sure. Hey, you know, like you know, we, you know, we all wish it, we all wish you know, you know, if you know, it'd be that easy, but the, the fact of the matter is, uh, it's not, you know, again, uh, you know, achieving uh, new milestones is definitely a good thing, it definitely shows that you are going in that right direction, but uh, it, it, it does not mean that the work is over, you know, the work still continues, and uh, really, what perpetuates success is by. It's by uh, it's by having habits, which is the result of work, that creates more success. You know, each mm -hmm. I mean, any any habit that we do is, is is a form of work. You know, for you, you're saying affirmations. Well, that's working. You, you, you're working mentally. You're working in here. You're working. You know. Yeah. You know, like uh, you know, you're you're taking notes. You know, as far as you know, all these all these writing books you have, that's work. You know, like 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 it's just different types of work. You know, but. Just because you don't get paid doesn't mean it ain't work. Exactly. And it's just because you're getting that unpaid work is that unpaid work that's gonna make you a freaking million. You know? Exactly. Or that unpaid work that you do to build up the infrastructure of your business, of your services, 
the more of those unsung hours slaving away at the computer, yeah. at, uh, library, that's that's what gets you the million. And I'm I'm chasing the million. That's my goal. But yeah. I've done a lot of that invisible work, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's a great point. Um, let's 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 talk about let's talk about your recent account. Uh, with, okay. with Fitbit, uh, I'm quite sure a lot of people. Uh, I mean, actually, a Fitbit is, is very popular on the internet. People, I mean, I, I won't, I'm not going to say everyone knows what Fitbit is, but people specifically in that niche definitely know what Fitbit is. Let's talk about oh, yeah. that. Let, let's talk about that process. Perhaps there were some similarities of how you confirm uh, the other accounts along with this Fitbit account. But let's talk about that process and kind of kind of bring us up to speed now. Of, 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 of how you and Fitbit are, are going along. Okay. Um, so how I landed the contract? Yes, with Fitbit. Okay. Um, well, it was in those periods of broke, just being totally broke and thinking, what the heck, why not? You know, I have the background, I have the skills to write for Fitbit. They're the best in the industry that I've been working in. Why not write for them? You know, I didn't limit myself. I thought, if these people can write for Fitbit, I can write for Fitbit because I work my little Chinese butt off. And Fitbit, All right? and Fitbit, I'm not came, Chinese. And Fitbit came after Training Amigo and the State of New Mexico, correct? Yep. Okay, great. Please continue. Um, so I drafted up a query, and it was right after the well drive for my first corporate wellness uh, company that was you know, making a buck a word and doing a lot of editing gigs and creating cool relationships with their creative department. That was amazing. Uh, just as an aside for any freelancers out there, go local. Get involved with uh, creative departments. Get involved with creative managers. Get involved with team projects where you have to brainstorm and to solve real life problems in real time and to, to go back and forth with somebody and to just share their energy and to learn from them, it's been invaluable for me. It's uh, and it inspires me to keep going, you know, to keep chasing more of that. Um, but back to Fitbit, yeah. I'll I'll read you the opening line of my Fitbit pitch, which landed, and I sent it like a, a dodo. I sent it to their global marketing director. Wrong person. Uh, when you're pitching, know exactly who to pitch. If you don't know exactly who to pitch, call somebody. Call call their um, their general helpline, call their offices, because if you don't hit the right person, chances are you're not going to get your message across. Uh, so I, I, uh, I pitched Fitbit, and here were the opening lines. Hi, Tim, I'm Dan. Past year I've worked as a writer and editor for a corporate wellness company. Bad news, they tanked. But the good news is that I've caught fire for corporate wellness. I'd like to continue my career with Fitbit. I blogged for, okay, that's the introduction, is getting him interested, uh, sharing a little bit of who I am and what I have to offer. Then I go into leveraging the social proof. media, uh, le leveraging the social proof, yeah. Uh, I'd like to continue my career with Fitbit. I've blogged for some of the top wellness sites in the world, including entrepreneur.com, mindbodygreen.com, chichi.com, and Tiny Buddha. I'll add to Fitbit with my polished editorial work as well as my passion for wellness. Um, yeah, and I, I go on and, and I give them pitches for articles that I'd like to write for them. And that was what landed the, the good stuff because um, I had been reading a book about breathing, about the importance of breathing. It's called The Oxygen Advantage. Um, and it just inspired me to, to write. And so two of my pitches were based on that, better breathing and better breathing techniques and how to improve your life. And it just happened that around the same time, Fitbit came out with a new Fitbit that monitors breathing. So the content manager, well, uh, Tim Rosa got in touch with me personally, which was cool. This you know top executive at one of the top companies in the entire world. And uh, he said, all right, I like I like your stuff. I'm sending you to our content director, um, or our content manager, and um, so he told me that he forwarded my stuff there. He asked for my resume. I provided it, 
and great. And then I waited a week and nothing happened. I waited another week and nothing happened. So I didn't want to wait anymore. I researched their content director myself. He told me her name. Um, and uh, Kimberly Daly. So I looked her up on LinkedIn. I sent her the exact pitch that I had. Um, hold on one sec. I had sent her the exact pitch that I sent to Tim Rosa and just followed up, you know. Um, MTV Chris with Daniel Dolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is uh, this is probably better lighting too. All right, there we go. Cool. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So I followed through with the pitch. Uh, Tim Rose is a busy guy, so I couldn't depend on him to field this random query from a freelancer, even though he said he would. You know, he's so busy. So I. I repitched it. She got in touch with me. She said, "Hey, you seem like a perfect fit. Let's work together." So we got on a call together. Got to know a little bit about each other. She told me how it was coincidental that the pitches coincided. Uh, pardon the redundancy. She told me that it was a cool coincidence for the pitches uh, to come together at the same time that um, the new Fitbit app is coming. So that's what they want to promote, and that's what they want their content to be around. And yeah, uh, I just signed the, all of the contracts for it yesterday, and it's a dollar per word. And awesome, man! It's good work. I mean, awesome. It, give me a dollar. That, give me a dollar. Yeah. Ellipsis, give me a dollar. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's and it's that you know, uh, the shorter the article, really, the more work because you have to make each sentence so jam packed with value. It has to be succinct. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's, it's, it, it, it's 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 so great uh, to uh, to to hear all this uh, success um, that you're having. As we come to a close, uh, if people want to, you know, get in contact with you, Daniel, or if people want to follow you, um, you know, on, you know, social media, maybe you know, you know, talk to you via email or something like that. How would they do that? Well, you can get in touch with my secretary. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't have a secretary. <laughs> www.dowlingwriter. One day you will. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, one day I will. Yeah. Um, www.dowlingwriter.com. And my email is daniel at dowlingwriter.com. Dowling like bowling with a D. And uh, yeah. That's that's how you can do it. But you can check, you can Google me, uh, Daniel Dowling Entrepreneur, Daniel Dowling Mind Body Green. Check out my articles. Um, my biggest passion is to motivate millennials and get them off the couch so they can get to their passions, get in the life that they want, get them producing, and helping make life better for all the rest. Because each one of us has amazing talents that we are gifted to by God, and if we put in a little bit of work, we can make them work miracles you know and the the results don't come instantly <laughs> but uh they do come if you persist and if you make it a point to get better each day and encourage yourself for sure daniel has a lot of great content i definitely recommend um that you uh check him out whether it's goodman project elite daily cheat sheet mind body green uh, I, I can't I can't keep up with all, all the publications you write for. <laughs> uh, I'm getting on Ink Magazine too. Uh, yeah, I just got one of the welcoming letters. That, that's another one. Wish we could uh, wish we could cover that. Wish we could cover that in this uh, in this uh, interview. But uh, fortunately, uh, that's probably something that we will have to uh, discuss next time. Daniel, thank you for being our guest. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Can I give five directives to do every day for your audience? For sure. Let's go. They want to see five directives. Okay. Get control of your morning thoughts. As soon as you wake up, think about how awesome your life is. Thank God or the universe, whatever, for all that you're grateful for. Get excited about what you get to do today. Don't focus on what you lack or what you've been robbed of or uh, all these factors that are going against you. Because if you focus on that, not going to have room to do these amazing things that are all around if you just focus on it. So shift your focus to the positive. Uh, 
visualize your success, um, feel your success, feel the, see the people who you're helping through your hard work and through your accomplishments. And think about your family, think about your friends, think about your healthy body, think about all these incredible things that you have to kick butt with. And then number two, after you get out of bed, go in the mirror and look at yourself and encourage yourself and thank yourself for the hard work that you're doing. If you don't have that motivation, there's no, there's no uh, external motivation that can help you in the world. You know, a thousand people could be behind you in a crowd. You still wouldn't make the last steps in the marathon because you don't have that self-motivation. So get in front of the mirror, motivate yourself, and tell yourself how much you love yourself, how much you appreciate your hard work, and what you see in yourself, how, much, uh, how great of a guy you are, how generous you are, how charitable and energetic and vibrant and healthy and bold, and all these things that you want to be. See that in the mirror and bring that out in yourself. No one else will. And that will get you primed up to think about your daily goals. Um, so number, number three, daily plan out your day. Plan out your day. If you need to make 50 pitches, if you need to make 40 pitches, whatever, pick out that number, set it as a goal, and then choose a time to do it. If you don't, no one else is going to do it for you, and you won't get it accomplished. You must plan out your day. Um, and then as you can as you continue your day, it make make it balanced too, not just about work. You know, if you, you need to have fun, you need to enjoy yourself, you need to pursue your passion. So listen to music, treat your body well, get up every hour and stretch your body, exercise, uh, eat good food, drink lots of water, um, put all those goals down and then attack you know when you have that motivation from your affirmations and from your you know looking at yourself in the mirror and encouraging yourself you're gonna have the motivation to attack the first goal and once you check that off and give yourself a pat in the back you go for a bigger one a bigger one and if you keep that up for a day a week a year after a year your whole life has changed because you've done everything that you need to do uh, no one else is going to tell you to do them so you need to write those directives down um, number four, have fun. You can't just grind. And I just got done writing an article about this that I'm going to be publishing for Inc. Magazine today. Um, if you're not having fun, you're going to question why you're hustling. You know, it can't be hustle all the time. You got to take some time out to satisfy your needs. You know, if you need to go out, like for me, I'm a beach volleyball player. I need to go out there and be with the boys. I need to, you know, I need to do the high fives. I need to do the spikes and the slams and the digs and to physically exert my body to my maximum potential while you know, having a ton of fun with friends in a, in a fun social sporting environment. I need that. So I give that to myself. If I don't, then it shows in my writing and it shows in my lack of motivation. So do fun things. And if you don't know about your fun things, if you don't know enough about yourself to really know about those things that you love so much, that leads to step five, journaling. Every night before you go to bed, spend 15 to 30 minutes journaling. You must do it because your thoughts are what build your life. And if you don't keep track of those thoughts, they become your subconscious, and then they redirect you to everywhere but where you want to go. If you have little me thoughts, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm not good enough, I'm, I'm too small, I'm a failure. If you let those thoughts below your radar and you don't change them, then there is no amount of hoping and praying and wishing uh, that can change your course. So you have to write down your day in a daily journal, you know, just break away from the TV, from the computer, just get to a quiet spot where you can reflect on your day and your thoughts that built your day and go over it all, you know, everything, uh, your feelings, what you thought and how it influenced your day and what you can do better, what you did awesome at, um, and, you know, the action steps that you can do tomorrow to make to to overcome those insufficiencies to to be the best person that you can be and if you do those five things there is no stopping you I mean you will you'll have a balanced life and you're going to progress every single day um, you're going to be grateful for what you have and then you'll get more and then you'll be able to share more because you're doing what you love 
and you're doing it for the people that you love and want to help. So that's my five directives. If you want to rule your life. Great. And to get extraordinary results, it starts by being an extraordinary person. And uh, you, you, can't, you, you can't reach the finish line being ordinary. You know, and we had, and, and Daniel gave you five directives and uh, hope you implement that. So again, Daniel, thanks for being our guest. Thank you so much for having me, Kyle. It's been a pleasure to talk with you.